Welcome to Covered Season 2. Get ready for an amazing set of interviews with business strategists, insurance experts, and wellness professionals in Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. The focus this season is to help growing companies build a healthy and safe work environment. We'll cover pressing questions like what exactly does it cost for a new business to provide health insurance to a team? And if you're a benefits consultant, why is Mountain Health Co-op a first choice for so many businesses in the Rocky Mountain West? If you're ready to take ownership of your business and your benefits knowledge, this is the season for you. Just like this, we are live at Mountain Health Co-op HQ with Sean Jacobs. Sean, thank you so much for joining us on Covered. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, great to have you. So we brought you in here today as part of our season on business to business, talking about health insurance for small businesses, business owners, and talking to agents about what the co-op is all about. Um, so maybe if you want to start with just a brief introduction of yourself and your business for our listeners. Yeah, you bet. Um, my name is Sean Jacobs. I'm the owner and the main agent broker for Rocky Mountain Insurance of Helena. Uh, I've been I've owned that business and been an independent agent for just about eight years, uh, right before the Affordable Care Act actually came into law. Uh, I worked at Blue Cross Blue Shield for 15 years, so uh, that's my main experience in the health insurance industry and kind of where my roots are and where I learned it all Yeah, um, from the big corporation. So uh, born and raised Helenan, uh, I am, uh, I've, I've known nothing else than health insurance since I got out of school. I'm a born and raised Helenan, went to Carroll College and have a business management degree. Uh, family of, got a family of four, great wife and two boys. Um, one awesome. boy's graduated from high school and one is a sophomore. Great. Here in Helena. So, yeah, I've known nothing else but Montana and Helena my whole life. Well, Montana and health insurance credibility established. So, yeah, thanks. that's right. Yeah. That's right. Nice work. Yep. Um, well, let's let's jump right in then. And I want to talk about uh, small business and small group coverage. So for our listeners who are business owners in Montana, in Idaho or possibly Wyoming, um, what advice would you have for somebody that is growing a business, their employees are not yet insured, uh, they don't have much experience in health insurance, and they're thinking about, Sean, what, what are my next steps to retain the great employees that I have and offer them some coverage? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that an employer has to look at is what does their competitive space look like as far as, and I hear this all the time from employers, like, I need to compete with the other employers to retain good staff. And what you find with group health insurance and all the different things that you can offer, not just group health insurance, but all the creative things that we can do that the law now allows, uh, implementing those to make you attractive to a great workforce. I mean, that's the biggest factor in why you would even look at something. Next step, you know, and the next thing that you have to look at is, well, it's obviously budgetary because it's an investment. It is an absolute financial investment between you, not for just you as the employer, but the employees themselves mm -hmm. are going to be making that investment. So looking at, okay, how much money do I have in the annual budget to put towards whatever I'm going to start? That's the yeah. main thing and the driver of what gets group health insurance started at a company, especially for a startup company. There's a lot of companies who it's been unaffordable over the years or it's been a tough budgetary thing to throw in. And it's always good, like I tell people, it's free to quote and it's free to shop. Mm -hmm. So you should always be looking at it and there's so many changes going on that with all those changes, you may have looked at it a year or two ago and re-looking at it a year or two later, you may find something very different. And yeah. then again, there's always options. And if you don't stay on top of it, you don't really know what's truly available. Yeah. And is would you say that's the role of the business owner is to stay on top of those things? Or is that where working with an agent is really valuable? And yeah, it, you know, it's, it is the role of the, it really is the role of whoever leads the organization to keep looking into those things. However, mm -hmm. you don't want to go, you definitely do not want to go about it alone because yeah. it's extremely complicated. So you, an agent and you will see like the co-op, 
the agent is the model because we are on top of the regulation. We are certified wherever we have to be certified and we stay up on all of that. And that's our job. Just like it's not our job to know the business that the business owner has. I, right. I tell I tell my plumbing businesses all the time, like you don't want me working on your pipes. Well, it's the same thing. I don't want them working on health insurance. So yeah. having an agent and an expert in the field is absolutely necessary. Let's say it's a team of three to five and the business owner says, okay, I'm ready to insure my employees and make this step. Do you recommend that they get their team involved in that decision in the early process, sort of after they've whittled it down to maybe three selections for their employees to choose from or to just choose everything for them? You know, I, th I think it starts with a straw poll. If you're looking at starting a benefit plan, mm -hmm. it's a straw poll is what I call it with the employees that is like, okay, look, who's interested here. And even before that, you could even get a very quick quote. I mean, all it takes is the ages and the number of employees, and you can quote in today's world extremely fast, taking that to the team and say, look, who's even interested because we don't wanna spend the time and effort if you guys don't want this or need this. And there's so many different scenarios that you find with employees and it really does depend on your workforce and yeah. you know the the salaries and what access do they have through spouses and things like that so you get very different answers at, at different employers right. so taking that straw poll and kind of getting it to that point and then you really you know at that point if it's a go and the employees say yes and the budget is there um, moving it forward and it's really a, it's a very easy process from there. That sounds pretty simple. As yeah. a business owner, I'm sure they're thinking, okay, but how do I get it down to a couple options? How do how does that process even work if I have, you know, my workforce looks like I have a student straight out of school who's in, you know, getting insurance through their parents right now. I'm not too excited to sort of pay for their health insurance perhaps. I have a, you know, a senior who's, you know, helping out with uh, this project and I want to insure them. So it's a, just very different employer employee circumstances. Yes. And on a team of three to five, that's much different than a team of 300 to 500 because, okay, well, we got to cover everybody, but how do you navigate that as a, as you know, I think you, you put the heavy lifting on your broker for all of those things. And those yeah. are the questions that naturally come up when you're trying to start all this. I mean, it, it's all covered and the agent will walk you through all of those different things. And here's what this scenario looks like. And it's all about scenario building. Here's what this scenario looks like. And yeah. if this employee is not in, here's what it looks like. But you got it. You have to rely on your agent to do, like I say, that is the heavy lifting of all of this mm -hmm. is to help you manage. And if you have a good agent, they'll make it very clear, very quickly. And it will come, it will come to the forefront like, this is the best option for us. Yeah. Whether it's offering one plan or two plans or multiple plans, or maybe, um, you know, maybe having a health savings account and putting money into the health savings account for the employees. And again, all those creative things that you can do, that's what the agent is for. Yeah. Absolutely has to be relied upon. It sort of feels like for us, like I mentioned, we're a team of, you know, there's five of us uh, at Pintler Group. And it sometimes feels we don't have an HR department it sometimes feels like our health insurance agent is our human resources department. Do you find that, that when, when an employee says, Hey, I have this health insurance question. It's, you know, it's kind of personal. I'm like, okay, let's, let's take it to our agent and see what they have to say. Yes. Is that common? Do you, do you find that? That is, yes, that is common. Yeah. Uh, the agent does kind of act as the uh, human resources director for benefits. So it's not overstepping Once the benefit. bounds. Doing Absolutely that. Yeah. not. Okay. I'll tell you, uh, certain agents have diff have certain models. Yeah. My model at my agency is I tell all the employees and the employer, whoever it may be that is going to handle the things, you actually run it all through me. So mm -hmm. adding new employees, uh, terminating employees, all those things, and the actual management of the business, I offer that service yeah. as an agent. And I think you'll find most agents uh, definitely have that model. Yeah. So and maybe if you don't find that agent, find a new agent. Well, possi possibly, possibly. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say <laughs> okay. that into this microphone, but yeah, if you don't feel like you're getting the service, know that there's agents out there. I know a lot of the, I know a lot of agents. A lot of them are my friends and most of the agents provide exceptional service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk co-op because I know when, when we were shopping for group coverage, uh, we were presented with a couple options and then 
you know, co-op was one of them. And this seemed like a, a no-brainer for us to say, okay, for a small business, small group coverage, this seems like a, a great option. Can you talk about some of the ways that co-op uh, for health insurance for a small group um, or an entrepreneur is you know, one of the reasons why you, you sometimes say, hey, this is a good option for you? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's interesting with the co-op, they, um, they've come a long way. They were, hand, you know, Montana was handed a grant about eight years ago with the Affordable Care Act and was told, here, create a competitor. In the largest change time that group and individual insurance has ever seen. Wow. And, you know, us agents and every, you know, people in the market, they're like, okay, this, this isn't going to, this is not good. This is not going to last. And here we are eight years later and I've watched, I've been an agent for about as long as the co-op has been in business yeah. and I've watched the changes that have come. So where the, where the co-op is today from where they've come, they've made doctor network changes, improvements. Uh, the products initially were kind of tough and you know, maybe, maybe weren't there. Now they're right in line with all of the competitors. And in many cases, you've got some extra things that Richard and the crew here have now thrown in and it makes it a very attractive option. And in a lot of cases, depending on where you live, it's actually the most competitive price, which again, is probably the most important thing for an employer when you're looking at the budget. So when you line them all up and you put it all together, the co-op is actually a great option for Montanans. And from what I know, they're doing great. They're financially strong. And I feel like they've gotten over the hurdle that we all thought they might fall on like the other couple dozen co-ops mm. in the nation. I mean, there's less than a handful of those co-op startups um, from eight years ago that are even left. And, um, you know, proudly enough, Montana's made it. Yeah. yeah. Montana and Idaho. Yeah. And it seems like from a group coverage standpoint, you know, there's, there's more and more businesses that are looking to co-op. Uh, every day. Yeah. Uh, and what I see now in the last couple of years, now they're starting, it's like, okay, we have the health insurance portion down, you know, the main benefits. Uh, now let's look at adding this. Let's look at adding vision, you know, and dental and the other things and expanding into these other markets. So yeah, yeah it's kind of exciting. And uh, they're doing exactly what the Affordable Care Act wanted. Yeah, it is exciting. And it's, I think it's also kind of the Rocky Mountain West mentality to Know, stay local and member owned and you know all the savings go right back into the business to make it better and I feel like perhaps some of the other state models maybe that mentality uh, didn't exist as strong there yeah I agree um, you know there's we've seen changes with the other carriers too I'll tell you with the co-op I know I mean I'm, again I'm a local Helena Montana native here yeah. so I know that I can call somebody and still get local help. If I need help as an agent, yeah. and I know that even with our customers, they can call and still get somebody local. So, and that's how mm -hmm. insurance always was all these years. Um, and you know, you've seen some of the big conglomerations happen. The Affordable Care Act kind of forced that, mm -hmm. but the co-op has kind of held true to the Montana way, which is smaller is better. And um, yeah, it works. Yeah. Um, pivoting back to entrepreneurs, if you could, if you could give one piece of advice to an entrepreneur that's thinking about insuring their employees, uh, what would it be? Yeah, best piece of advice is get a hold of an agent and start the process from the get go. Involve somebody that knows what's going on, and not even going directly to the carrier. I mean, the carriers would actually, if you go to the co-op, they will probably refer you to a local agent in your area anyway, mm -hmm. just because that's the model that, you know, they've um, reinforced and that's what they use. So get a hold of an agent and get all the things in front of you along the way. That's what an agent's going to do is get you the proper tools and information you need to make those decisions. And there's decision points along the way. Yeah. This is not just a yes or a no. There's a lot of things that go into the yes or no decision um, ultimately. Totally. Yeah. Um, I know it's hard to estimate costs, but let's say I've you know, got a product, I've got a team of two, and I'm looking at my budget, and I'm just in the decision or that early phase of, well, how do I budget for this? What should I be anticipating for a monthly cost per employee out of the company budget? Is it 400 bucks a month? Is it $4,000 a month? Like these are questions that I just think yeah. people have and don't 
don't you know, know where it's all you know it's all there, there's a few factors here first off the current law and that we are all held by in the especially in the small employer market is that the rates are based on the ages of the employees so a 20 year old for example pays one third of what a 60 year old pays and that's the that's the slope rating that is currently in the law so if a, if a rate for a bronze plan is two hundred dollars for a 20 year old it's six hundred dollars for a 60 year old so that's a tough question for me to mm, to give right but I do actually do get that question quite a bit and I I'm tell sure. people look just bank on three to five hundred so about four hundred if you want an average mm -hmm. but it's pretty rare that a rate uh, you know, for a bronze level plan. And I always start with bronze just because it's the lowest. People want to know, like, how, where's it at? I'm not going to quote a gold plan, right? Sure. Because that's going to be more expensive. Gold plans are going to be 900 to to $1,000 for a 60-year-old. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, right about 400 is what an employer can expect. And that's the full cost of the monthly premium for medical insurance. Okay. And then, of course, it's generally shared between the employer and the employee with the employer giving a percentage of that contribute, you know, contribution mm -hmm. percentage towards the employee's cost. And then the balance, the beautiful thing, a group insurance, any balance from the employee that's due will be set up with pre-tax dollars so they don't pay taxes on that money. It comes out of their paycheck pre-tax. Nice. Yep. Um, what, if, if you were to, you know, if a hundred small groups, if you took an average, what percentage does the employer pay of the employee health insurance on average? Is it fifty percent? Would you say is it seventy five percent? I'd say the I'd say the average. If I had to take the entire average of all of my employer groups and the employer groups in uh, Montana and Idaho, mm -hmm. sixty probably the average is sixty to seventy five percent. You see a lot of employers contribute 50, but there's still a lot of employers out there that are able to just based on their business model and you know the revenue coming in and the budget. Uh, I have employers, there are some employers who still pay all of the percentage. Yeah. Uh, that is extremely rare in today's world and you know large employers like uh, even the state of Montana does not pay the entire cost anymore. So yeah. that's, that's a thing of the past. In the end, I'd say the general average is probably about 60% okay. of the employee share. Of the employee share. And yep. then adding a spouse or kids, that's... Yep. And most, most common there, usually that cost is put on to the employee at 100%. There are, again, mm -hmm. some employers that are able to actually contribute some sort of percentage. Cover a bit more. Yeah, cover a bit more and give some towards the spouses and, employ and uh, children. Cool. Yeah, I think that's helpful. I think those are just questions that when you're in the world, Sean, you know, you, it's like, oh, well, yeah, you employee coverage. But I think when someone's trying to get their employees covered, they just don't know, you know, boy, do I, I don't want to seem like a jerk and cover half if yeah. everybody's covering 100%. Yeah, no, 50% is probably the most common. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, what an employer would need to know is the law in Montana. Um, I, can, I can speak to the Montana law and this is what you have to give to be a bona fide employer plan. You have to give 50%. So if an employer is listening to this and the average rate is $400 per employer, bank on for your budget $200 per employee. That's the minimum that you have to give to have a group health plan. So that's yeah. a good budgetary, like, you know, just we're very high level here. Yeah. But that's a good budgetary number that someone could use. They can put in their business Absolutely. plan and figure yeah. it out. So no, it is not hundreds of thousands of dollars per employee well, or tens of thousands. I'm yeah. sure there's some entrepreneurs thinking, okay, good. You know, maybe I <laughs> yeah. can put on my career page. Hey, we'll, we'll pay some benefits. This is a, now I can really up our, up our talent pool. So sure. that's exciting. Um, Sean, how can people find out more about you and get in touch with you if they have additional questions about group coverage? Yeah, you know, I welcome uh, emails. Email's a great way to get a hold of me. I always cool. offer, um, crazily enough, I, always, I give my cell phone out cell to phone. everybody. Like all of my employees of my employer groups, I'll get my cell phone. And I, it's not, it, I mean, it's it's rare, but it's not too too rare where I will get in a, I will get a call from an employee that's standing at the doctor's office saying, "Look, my insurance is not working. Help me," mm. and that's what I offer to my clients. And I know yeah. other agents do that too. So, best way to reach me is you know, like my cell phone is four zero six. We'll put in the four three one. Yep, zero four three one zero seven four two. And then my email address is Sean Jacobs S H A W N. J A C O B S seven five at gmail.com. Nope, I'm gonna scratch that. We're gonna go business. business. Sean S H A W N 
at R-M-I-G-I-N-C dot com. Great. And then my website's currently down, but it'll be up at uh, www.rmiginc.com. It's another Perfect. way you can look at me. I've got a Facebook page and I'm on LinkedIn as well. Great. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure to link up all of those in the show notes. So if, if folks do have questions or want to get started, they'll, you know, they can have a place um, to find you. Sure. Um, anything that I didn't ask that you were hoping, oh, Kyle, how could you not have asked me this? You know, I don't think so. We okay, covered, we yeah, covered very, very high level. You yeah. know, again, um, there's a there's a lot of things in the weeds that an agent will will walk through. Um, it, but the main thing is employers, especially those who do not have a plan in place currently, don't be overwhelmed because it's really not that hard. And you know, the co-op and all the resources that we have out there, even we've really got the federal law kind of down now. It was, it was awful to start, you know, eight years ago, it was extremely complicated. It's kind of ironed itself out. We kind of know exactly the paths that we take. Mm-hmm. It's not that big of a deal and it's worth looking into if you are considering it and you need it. If you need it to keep your talent pool, it's something you should absolutely look into. Great. Yep. Well, John, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah.